Okay, welcome back. This is Ms. McMurray, and we're going to talk about organic compounds. We've been talking about organic, uh, in particular hydrocarbons, which come from old, dead, living things that have turned into coal or uh, crude oil or something like that. Uh, now we're going to talk about some other organic compounds. We're going to call these biochemistry notes, uh, just because bio has to do with living things, and these are ones that living things need while they're living, okay? Hydrocarbons are from the remains of dead animals uh, that still contain carbon, and so these, of course, are going to be organic also, and they're going to contain carbon. Uh, but these are ones that we actually need while we're alive and doing that, okay? Um, many of these will be polymers, like we talked about in the other one, made of many units of monomers or single units hooked together, so there'll be long chains. And so uh, let's look at four main types, okay? The first type we're going to talk about is number one is carbohydrates. Now, you've probably heard that because everybody talks about carbohydrates or not eating carbohydrates, and that means you know it has carbo, means there's carbon in it, hydra, tells you there's hydrogen, and we know that ATE on the end of one means that there's an oxygen stuck on. So the symbol for carbohydrates is CHO for short, okay, because technically this just means a hydrated carbon, okay? So it's got hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon all put together in a hydrocarbon carbohydrate. Now, uh, there's some very two main kinds, or several main kinds. We have monosaccharides, that's a fancy word, uh, but saccharide just means sugar, or actually it literally means sweet, okay? So this is a single or simple one sugar by itself, all right? Sugars, let's look at a couple examples here, uh, are usually kind of a ring structure, Okay, see if I can make that a little bit bigger. Okay, um, so for example, this bottom one down here in the corner is glucose. Okay, glucose has, uh, each of these corners has a carbon on it. This one has an oxygen. Here's another carbon, and then there's one carbon up here. So it makes a total of six carbons, and this is basically what plants make. They make uh, these little rings of glucose, and then use the energy from those to build other things in your cells. But that's basically glucose. Another common one is fructose, like high uh, corn, high, high uh, phew. Yeah, the corn syrup. Okay, high fructose corn syrup. There we go. That means it's got a lot of this fructose in it. Okay, very similar. Another five ring. Uh, this one's only a five ring instead of a six-sided ring like this one. And that would be a different sugar. Okay, there are others. There are uh, one called galactose. Sounds like something out of Star Wars or something. Galactose. But there we go. Galactose. Uh, we have ribose, which is in RNA. That's where the R, in fact, comes from. Uh, it has that sugar in it, and uh, deoxyribose, which guess what, also has to do with, uh, but it's in our DNA because it's deoxyribose, okay, so RNA has, so basically at our core, in our genes, in our cells, we are all sweet, okay, uh, some of us may hide it pretty well on the outside, you may know some people you would never guess, but we all have sugars in our DNA and RNA, all right, now, uh, these are monosaccharides. Now, it's also possible to have disaccharides. Saccharides. Let me make sure I try to spell that right. All right. Di means two. So these are two sugars or double sugars, if you will, that have been hooked together. All right. Sucrose. This is what we uh, eat, put on your breakfast cereal, whatever. You see the, the cane. Uh, cane sugar there, uh, made from cane sugar, and this is basically, if you put glucose, fructose together, then it makes a disaccharide, or double sugar, called sucrose, okay, and that's what we call sugar most of the time, we just say uh, table sugar, and what we really mean is sucrose, okay, now, um, besides that, we also have some other double sugars, lactose, you may have heard of, in milk, lactose intolerant people, or people who can't break down uh, this sugar, and so it causes uh, uh, various degrees of discomfort or uh, other problems in their system. Uh, mal maltose, malt sugar, uh, this would be, uh, a lot of cereal grains have this, malted barley, they used to make beer and so forth. The sugar that the uh, yeast live on and break down and make alcohol from would be the maltose sugar, okay? So these are all double sugars or uh, disaccharides. Now, both the mono and the disaccharides, all right, are basically all going to be used for quick energy, 
All right. So if you're going to uh, run a race like a 100-yard dash, you might want to eat a candy bar up for it, and your body would help you burn that up to make uh, quick energy. Okay. So it burns very quickly, and then it goes away. Now, the problem is if you're... Uh, if all we had were monosaccharides, you would have to constantly be eating because what if you slept for tw 10 or 10 hours or so and and you didn't eat in that time, well, you might run low on sugars and your body might basically start to die off because you don't have enough sweets. So there needs to be some way to store these. And fortunately for us, there is. And they are called polysaccharides. Okay, poly just means many so these are many sugars hooked together now an example of that would be this one down here and this is an example of starch there's a lot of different kinds of starches and so forth okay but basically what we do is we take these sugars and a lot of times they have OH groups right next to each other well if we take one of the hydrogens one of the hydrogens and one of the oxygens that would make water, so we take out water, and that oxygen needs something to hang on to, so we hook it onto the next sugar. And we can just keep doing this indefinitely and make long chains. That's how we make the double chains, like sucrose up here, okay? We hook two of them together with oxygen there. We hook more of them together in starch. Starch might be thousands of these sugars hooked together in a row. So basically, polysaccharides are, if you want to think about it that way, they're dehydrated. Okay, we've taken water out of them. They're dehydrated sugars that are all hooked together, and they are used to store energy. All right, so this way you can store lots and lots of sugars. All right, now if you're running a race like a marathon, you usually eat things like uh, pasta and things like that that have lots of starches because for your starches, as you're running, you can break this off. If you add water back to it, Okay, it will break this one off and you can burn that sugar. Then you add some more water here and you break that one off and you can burn that sugar. And so little by little you can use that energy gradually and it'll last you for a long time. So that's why a lot of athletes that are going to be in a long extended uh, race or contest or whatever will stock up on carbs because they can break them off and slowly reuse those sugars. So basically this is a way of storing energy. You may recognize this process, this idea of taking water off. We talked about it in plastics. They call it condensation reactions or, or uh, uh, polymerization, hooking them together. Same thing here. Sometimes you may hear it called dehydration synthesis. That just means putting it together. Okay. And then, like we said, we can add water to it and take it back apart. And that's called high hydrolysis okay so dehydration synthesis or condensation either one's fine reaction or a hydro and it puts it together and then hydrolysis we add water to split it back off all right and so that's what we do that now uh, in plants plants will store their food in starch that's why we eat potatoes or flour products like pastas that are made from wheat and stuff that come from plants in animals such as ourselves all right, in animals, our liver changes the sugar uh, from sugars into glycogen. Okay, glyco, gly, glucose is similar, but glycogen. All right, and so we would store it in our liver as glycogen. Now, the last thing I'd like for you to know about uh, carbohydrates is regardless of whether they're sugars, the mono and disaccharides that are used for quick energy, whether it's the polysaccharides like starch and glycogen that are used for long-term st storage. Um, oh, I'm sorry. One other one I forgot. Uh, cell Plants also use what we call cellulose, which is a rigid carbohydrate to build things that's what makes their cell walls and make plants stand up we when we eat it we don't say oh how much cellulose that food have we say how much fiber did it have okay and that's another thing so they can be used to these polysaccharides can be used to store energy they can also be used to build uh, plant parts like this cellulose and that's why you have to get your fiber we're talking about fiber it has to be something that comes from plants okay uh, but yeah all of these are used for when they're used for energy if we burn them for energy have four calories per gram okay so if you have one gram if you look on the side of the nutrition label of some food and say it says oh there are 
9 grams of sugar. Well, you could do 9 times 4. That means there's 36 grams of, of I mean, calories, excuse me, 36 calories of uh, energy in that food. Okay? Um, if you had 9 calorie, nine grams of starch, it's also going to be 36 calories. Same amount of calories, whether it's uh, sugar or starch. It doesn't really matter. Um, and so, uh, it's just a matter of how fast can you burn it. You can get to the sugar and burn it quicker. Your body has to go to the starch later to try to burn it. Notice calories are just energy. They're not good. They're not bad. They're just energy. If you don't have enough, you die. So you need calories. But you just don't need too many calories. You get too many calories, then it will be stored as our next organic compound, which is fat or lipids. And so that can be a bad thing. But calories are not good or bad. It's just a matter of how many that you have. All right, the next group I want to talk about are the lipids, okay? So we, we've got uh, the carbohydrates, now we have lipids, all right? Lipids. Uh, basically, these are fats, oils, and waxes. All right, if you think in terms of fat, usually we talk, these are solid lipids, okay? If you think about the fat on a piece of meat or something like that. Oils tend to be uh, liquid and Generally, just like this one's animals, and these are mostly plant sources. Sunflower oil, palm oil, coconut oil, um, safflower, or just vegetable in general at the store when you buy it is usually some mixture of these different kind of oils. Waxes are kind of semi-solid, semi-liquid. Uh, so uh, they're kind of solidy, liquidy, both. Okay, They're, they're kind of solid and they're kind of liquid, okay, uh, depending on where they're used. But for, uh, anyhow, um, but that's basically it, okay? Now, another concept that comes in here, we talk about saturated or unsaturated. Uh, well, let me talk first of all about how you get a fat. Okay, basically a fat, you start with a molecule of stuff called glycerol, okay? Notice these have OH groups. These would be carbons here with their hydrogens. Okay, and they have OHs, and we remember OHs means it's an alcohol, hence glycerol. Okay, it's in that group of chemicals, and these are what are called fatty acids because they have a double bond oxygen. They have OH group, double bond oxygen, OH group, double bond oxygen, OH group, and so because of that, uh, they're going to be called uh, they're going to be fatty acids, organic acids. Okay, what happens is these OH groups and the OH group off the acid mix. These make water again, guess what? Take off water, and they get all hooked together, and you end up with this molecule over here. This is a lipid, okay? Here's the glycerol. Here's what used to be an OH group, and it's been now hooked onto all these carbons, and so now you have uh, a lipid, all right? So this is a lipid. Um, now, they can be saturated, or they can be unsaturated, just like we talked about some of our hydrocarbons. Okay, you hear a lot about saturated fats, unsaturated fat. If you look here, there's a double, whoops, sorry about that, make you a little dizzy. All right. Um, if you look here, there's a double bond right there. So this would be an unsaturated lipid or fat because there's a place here where they could have more hydrogens, but instead it has a double bond between the carbons. All the other chains are saturated, but since this one's not, we would say this whole thing is an unsaturated. In fact, sometimes you may look on the side of a container and it talks about monounsaturated versus polyunsaturated. Well, this would be monounsaturated because there's only one place where it has this uh, double bond here. Okay. Now, notice that these uh, fats all of these chains coming off, they don't make long chains of this one attached to another one, attached to another one, attached to another one. So uh, they do not have polymers. Like we talked about, even with carbohydrates, they can make starch and glycogen, which are long chains of sugars, which are polymers made out of individuals, saccharides or sugars. Fats, this is as big as they get, okay? So they don't really have that characteristic. Now, what do we use for? We tend to think of fats as bad things, but there are good things. One, they're used for uh, long-term storage of high-energy compounds. Long-term storage of high energy. All right, we get lots of energy. All lipids have nine 
calories per gram. So you get almost twice as much energy that you can store in a fat than you could store in sugar and so forth. So it's a good way for our bodies to store these. Okay, And we're about the end, so we'll come back and finish with lipids in just a second.